Hello everyone, my name is Madeline Hartram Lowe and I am with Midwest Dairy. I'm one of their ambassadors and today we're here at Lankitis Holsteins. Um, this is a farm in St. Charles, Illinois, about 40 miles outside of Chicago and we're going to take you on a little dairy tour to kind of talk about um, how our cows work, how they're like athletes like you are, um, and how um, you can enjoy their products um, to help you in your athletic careers. Um, so follow me into the calf barn and we'll start with the beginning of life. Um, so today we're visiting Lankitis Holsteins in St. Charles, Illinois, which is just 40 miles outside of Chicago. We're starting today in the calf barn, as you can see. Um, so these are the calves, if you want to kind of walk with me here. Alright, so today I'm going to talk about the cows that we have here as kind of athletes at an athletic training facility. So from day one, we start our calves on a rigorous training program that continues throughout their lives here. Right now, the calves in this barn are being fed and cared for in a way that promotes growth and helps to build up reserves so they're prepared to have their first baby when they're two years old. Once a calf is born on this farm, he or she gets three to four feedings of colostrum from their mother um, before we switch them to replacer twice a day for 90 days. They also have free choice grain and water, as you can see. Um, and then as she grows, she'll graduate into different pens um, as she gets increasing in size, and then she'll join some friends um, and eventually go out into the heifer runs. Um, so we generally name them with the first letter of their mom's name, um, so we try to keep that. That way we, under we know where they're from, um, as well as we try to relate it to the sire's name. Um, so like right now we have Late Night Rebound. So her mom started with an R was her name, um, and then her dad is Late Night. So um, it just kind of works together. Yeah? Sorry, go ahead. They get milk for 90 days, so for the first three months of their life. Um, and then they just switch to grain and um, the water and then hay. So we feed them from a bottle, that way we can kind of control the quantity um, and the quality of the colostrum that they're getting, um, and then that's also why we switch them to the replacer. So again, we kind of control that quantity and quality um, so that we breed them to be athletes. Um, why do calves need colostrum? Uh, they need colostrum because it has antibodies from their mothers, um, so it helps them to build immunity right after they're first born. How big are they when they're born? They're generally about 90 pounds. Some are a little bigger, some are a little smaller. Um, there's been a couple sets of twins, um, but they're pretty big babies. <laughs> yeah. Do they specifically get their, like, their mom's milk, or is it just any? Ideally, they get their mom's okay. milk, um, unless we test it and it's like really poor quality, then sometimes we'll thaw a bag of stuff that we have um, from a different mom who had better quality, um, and then we feed them that. Yes. How much time do we need? How much time do we what? How is chocolate milk made? Chocolate milk is made by taking um, regular milk. So all cows produce white milk, sadly. Brown cows don't produce chocolate milk. Um, but we do you just add chocolate um, syrup or a chocolate powder um, to turn it into chocolate milk. Yeah. Is there colostrum in the milk we like get at the grocery store, or is that Yes, there is not colostrum that you get in the milk at the grocery store. It is exclusively for the calves. Um, so even if the mom, the mom has a certain milking period, I think it's like 96 hours, um, that we keep their milk and we don't let it go into the bulk tank where the milk goes to the grocery store. Any other questions? Uh, the blue tube above here, that's for ventilation, um, so that provides airflow in this barn so we don't have issues with like sickness, spreading sickness, spreading pneumonia. Um, also the reason these calves are individually separated when they're so young like this is it's kind of like if you had a big track team, you know, if one person gets sick then a lot, everybody's going to get sick. Um, so we try to keep them separated, that way nobody gets each other sick for when they're um, most vulnerable. So these are our milk cows. These are the full-fledged athletes of the farm. The amount of energy circulating in the blood of dairy cows um, in their body as well as their mammary system in a day is equivalent to that of the amount of energy needed to run a marathon. And a cow basically runs a marathon every day for while she's milking. So on this farm, we use robotic milking machines to milk our cows. 
This helps to reduce stress, lets the cow spend more of her day doing what she wants to do, um, and also gives us more data on the cows and how they're doing health-wise, um, and then how much milk they're giving us as well. So the robot gives us data like sports stats that tell us how much a cow is milking, so in pounds, and then what percent of her milk is made up of fat or protein um, or other components that we're interested in. So using this data, as well as um, different pedigrees and genetics, we can also use classification scores where they basically scale the cow on a uh, scale of zero to 100 of like how close she is to breed standards, um, as well as uh, feedback that we get from cow shows. We can continue to make better athletes, um, or better cows in this case, um, that give us uh, more, more milk, um, give us more higher quality of milk, as well as have the body and bone structures that they need to sustain their milking career, um, as well as efficiently convert feed into milk. Does anybody have any questions? We can kind of look at the robots and see how they work. So the things on their ears, they have ear tags um, that give us the number of the cow, so that helps the robot to identify them, as well as it has their birthday and then their name, so we can call them by name. They also have collars on their neck, um, and that also helps the robot to know who they are um, and helps us to monitor how much they're eating a day, how much they're ruminating a day, and then how much they're resting a day. Yes? Do cows prefer to be milked? Like, do they like being milked? They do like being milked. Okay. It releases oxytocin, which is kind of a feel-good hormone, um, so they do enjoy being milked. Cool. Yeah. On average, how many times a day um, are they milked? So each cow has a different permission setting for um, how many times a day she's allowed to get milked, but it's anywhere from two to five. So some of our higher producing cows or the ones that don't like to be super full, they get five times a day that they're allowed to milk. Um, other ones that can um, go a little longer or that are closer to their vacation days only milk twice a day. You can kind of look at how the robot's working. So this is moonshine. So you can see um, on our screen here, we have different controls that we can use. Um, to kind of control the gates. We can attach the unit manually. Um, we can separate her if we need to like treat her, so she'll go into our hospital pen. Um, we can also cue in cows, so if it's not exactly, if it's not their time to milk, they don't have permission yet, we can kind of override the robot and say, yes, they have permission to milk. Um, this one's a really cool feature. So this will show you, so conductivity is um, some of how we can measure if they're sick or not. So if they have really high conductivity levels, it correlates to somatic cells. Um, so then we know if they're um, kind of coming on with mastitis, so then we would treat them. Um, there's milking time, so how long it's been milking on her, um, how much each quarter has produced. So we don't just know how much she's totally producing, but how much each quarter is producing. Um, and then the milk flow. So like as some of these cups are coming down, you can see the milk flow is dropping to zero. Um, and then the temperature of the milk kind of as it's coming out of her body. So, and then the robot's kind of going in and it's gonna clean. It dipped her with iodine, so that'll just keep her teats um, nice and clean until the next time she gets milked so she doesn't get any bacteria in there. It'll wash, and then they'll be ready for the next cow. Let's see who else wants to come in. <laughs> so they're all in line. So yeah, no. yeah. So this is our holding area, so it's separate from where they like lay down and rest and eat, which we'll see when we go up there. Um, but yes, they do make pretty good minds to come milk. Do they ever not want to leave? Like they're yes. stubborn? Mm -hmm. Some of them don't want to leave. Um, some of them, this is called a passing visit. So she is not eligible to milk, but she thinks she is. So she just gets to come in, the robot reads her, um, and then she just walks right through because she's not eligible she's not yet. Eligible. So no, no one attaches the robot. It's completely, mm -mm. it's completely, we'll see it in a second, hopefully, if somebody comes in. Come on. How many robots are there? There's just these two. Okay. So we have a herd of, I think, 85 milking cows right now. Okay. And so these two, um, I think they can do up to 110. Um, so they'll milk the 85 once a day, like twice a day. Do they milk during certain hours of the day or all day? They're available 24-7 to the cows. So we have a lot of cows that like to do like midnight milkings or 2 a.m. milkings. <laughs> um, some of them aren't early birds like that. Okay. Um, but they are, the only time they're closed is when we need to clean them or it's doing a system wash where it's closed twice a day for half an hour to do like a full wash. Cows are milking at 3 in the morning and 3 in the afternoon, but I'm not physically here doing the labor all the time. Instead, a lot of the time is spent reviewing the data that the robots give us. So I can see every, every milking, every cow, every time, how much she made, how much she was expected to give, was it a good milking, those are a lot of like our health indicators for us to know how the herd's doing as a whole and 
how each individual cow is doing. So between what the robot tells us about the milking and then what those collars tell us about her eating, rumination, activity, we kind of put those two things together to kind of keep a pulse on how the cows are doing. So these are the cows, um, and this is kind of where they live. So this specific pen, these are our dry cows. So cows get 45 to 60 days of vacation every year. Um, so we generally have them milking for about 305 days every year. And that's the ideal milking um, lactation period. And then right before they're about to have their next calf, so within the two or three months, um, we dry them off. So they stop milking. They come into this pen where they just get to kind of hang out. They get to be with friends. Um, they eat a lot and then they get to say hi to their friends in the holding area. Um, so that's what the dry cows are. And then as we move forward, um, this is where the milking cows live. So I'm gonna talk about feed a little bit first. So as you can see, we have a robot there at the end that's pushing up the feed um, so that it's in front of the cows. It kind of gives them some fresh stuff because they're pretty messy with their food. So sometimes they kind of throw it around or spread it out. Um, so we try to make sure that there's always something in front of them. Um, a cow nutritionist helps us to formulate the food that we have, so he'll put in a certain amount of dry matter intake, um, and so that is calculated um, by lots of research. And then it's composed of certain forages, so like corn silage or haylage or any other haze. Um, and then we also put different supplements in, kind of like athletes take. So there's soybean meal that we use for protein, so it's kind of like your protein powder. Um, we also have a whole fuzzy cotton seed, which is a really good fiber. Um, and then different grains or supplements uh, like minerals um, to just keep them functioning um, at the level that they need to be. Let's see. Um, and then one note is when cows do get sick, um, like, elite, like elite athletes, we drug screen them. Um, so we don't let any antibiotics um, go into the milk tank. So whenever we have to put a cow on antibiotics because she's not feeling well, there's an infection, and it's not something we can treat otherwise, um, we do put her on antibiotics, but we do dump the milk. It just goes down the drain. Um, we don't put that in the bulk tank. And then we do uh, screen the bulk tank, kind of like a drug screening, to make sure that there's no antibiotics in it and we didn't accidentally make a mistake. Um, so that's a note about that. Um, and so all the cows in here, all they have to do every day is they milk a couple times a day whenever they want to. They have free choice feed whenever they want to eat. We have these nice stalls for them to lay down in. Um, so the stalls are made of rubber mattresses. Um, and then on top of it, we put manure solids. Um, so we have a manure scraper that's kind of like a big squeegee that runs down the aisles, pushes the manure um, into a pit. And then from that pit, it's pumped up into a machine called a manure separator where all of the water is squeezed out of it. So we save the water um, and then we use it twice a year to spread on the fields to fertilize them. And then the solids are actually, um, it's, they're pretty useless. Um, they're just pretty dry and fluffy. They're kind of like shavings. Um, so it's kind of an effort to be sustainable. So instead of bringing in something new like straw or pine shavings or wood chips, um, we use their manure solids because they're already dry and fluffy. They don't have a ton of bacteria um, and they make a nice cushy bed for the cows. Um, so that's something about that. Uh, let's think. We also have water troughs for them um, in multiple places around the barn. Um, these different crossovers, so they can go to the front, to the back. Um, the whole barn is climate controlled, so as you can see, we have all these fans, um, and we have curtains along the side here that control how um, warm or cold or drafty the barn is. So the curtains will close in the winter, which still lets air through because they have little mesh holes. Um, and then the fans are obviously running a lot right now because it gets really hot and humid over the summer because cows like to be kept at about 70 degrees, um, so they like it pretty chilly. This is a sort gate right here that's coming out, so we have the general population area and then the holding pen, which is where they wait to get milked. Other questions? 
we can kind of walk down and say hi to a few of them. So this is kind of where we spend most of our time is in this office kind of looking at these computers. Um, so on this screen here we have a thing called Dairy Plan um, which helps us to keep track of um, all of our vet actions that we take. It also gives us all the data that the robot collects. Um, so like I just pulled up this cow here, Abigail. Um, so it tells us every time that she's milked um, or even had a passing visit in the last, this is up until two days ago, um, and we can look back further if we need to. Um, it tells us how much milk, so if it goes below this like exclamation point, that's when they've had like lower milkings than we're expecting them to, so then we can say, oh, there might be a problem, we might need to treat them with something. Um, this conductivity is kind of like a somatic cell count, so that tells us like the bacteria in their milk, um, so then that also is an indicator of whether or not they're doing well. Um, we have different things here, so we can look at her genetics, her offspring. Um, we have control over where her milk goes and when. Um, if she doesn't have all of her four quarters functioning, um, we can tell the robot that it doesn't have to worry about one of them. Um, so this kind of tells us a lot of um, our data. Um, on this side here, this is our fetch list. So this is all the cows that um, may not have gone through the robot as they're supposed to in their last interval of time. Um, so we can bring them in um, and put, put them in the holding area. That way they're kind of forced to milk um, and make sure that they get more comfortable. Um, this side, this is the different robots. So these are kind of the same screens that we were seeing in the robot room. We also have this one um, that kind of tells us our animals that we might need to check on because they're down on feed or activity um, or rumination. So like if we look at this one, this will tell us, so these different graphs show us um, how much she's eating. Um, so on a daily average, so these nice little bar charts. Um, and then how much she's inactive or how much she's ruminating. Um, so we have these orange bars. These tell us that, oh, there was something off with her that day. Um, so then we know to check her, make sure she's doing well. Um, it also shows up here. So then we have like the last 24 hours. So we know that how she was doing relative to like yesterday. Um, so this helps us make a lot of decisions about who we're gonna treat, um, who we need to work with um, to get them to feel better um, or make sure that everybody's doing okay. So. You or I could go to the doctor and we can say, these are the symptoms I've been yes. having, these are how long I've been having those symptoms. The cows can't necessarily mm -hmm. tell us that, so mm -hmm. we have to do a little bit of detective work. So mm -hmm. those collars are really helpful in understanding what's going on with the cows. So we still go examine the cow, like I'll take a thermometer, take her temperature, take the stethoscope, listen to her heart and lungs. But I'll marry that with like that eating and milking data to kind of get like a full picture of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then we do have a veterinarian um, that we work really closely with. She comes here um, every three to four weeks. But then if anything comes up in between those visits, obviously with technology, I can text her pictures. We can FaceTime. We can do whatever we need to do to kind of correctly treat and diagnose, or diagnose and figure out a treatment for that cow. Mm -hmm. And then as Madeline was alluding to, a lot of times when we treat a cow, um, we do give her an antibiotic that's prescribed by the veterinarian, and with that antibiotic that we give the cow, there's what's called a milk withhold period. And that means that while that cow is receiving that medication, we do not put her milk in the tank. And so, as Madeline was explaining, we tell the robot, hey, we've treated this cow with this antibiotic, so when she comes in the milk, dump her milk. Do not send it to the tank. So that's how we ensure that the milk that you guys buy from the grocery store is antibiotic free. Is we make sure that we have that correct in the computer and then the milk is tested when it's picked up from the farm and when it goes to the processing plant to make sure that there is no antibiotics in it whatsoever. And then once that withhold period is up and the cow is feeling better, then only then can her milk be returned to the tank that can then be shipped to be consumed. So this is our bulk tank room. So this tank kind of goes out um, into the outside um, and it holds 3,000 gallons. So this holds 3,000 gallons of milk. 
Um, it's really big, actually, when you step inside it. It's about six feet tall. Um, I had to go inside it once to clean it. It was really fun, really enjoyed it. Um, there's these big agitator paddles on the inside of it, so this helps the milk not to separate into like cream and its different components um, as it's being stored. So like I said, ours gets pucked up every other day. It's kept at refrigerator temperatures, so like right now it's at 39 degrees. Um, and then there's a temperature chart on that wall as well, and that helps us to keep track of like when it um, goes into um, too cold or too hot. Um, so you can see there's a couple spikes, and that's when it's a system cleaning. Um, so we use really hot water to make sure it gets really clean um, after the milk truck comes and picks the stuff up. Um, there's also a milk filter here on this wall, um, so that helps us to initially filter it. It gets more filtered um, at the processing plant, um, but we initially filter it here on the farm as well. Anybody have any questions for in here? This is a reservoir um, kind of tank, so if we're doing something in this tank, um, we don't have to shut the robots down if we're um, having issues with the bulk tanks, like when I had to go in there to clean it, there wasn't milk kind of coming out around me all the time. Um, we could kind of shut it down and then all the milk just directs into the reservoir um, and it kind of holds up to like three to four hours of milk um, from the cows that are in the robots. We don't have to shut anything down. We don't have to cows the cows stress um, when we have to like fix a problem. Why do they have four compartments of their stomach? So they have four compartments of their stomach so that they can digest like the plant material that we can't digest. Um, so that helps them to digest like the cellulose. They have different bacteria and especially like the first compartment called the rumen. It's like a big fermentation vat. Um, so that's kind of where a lot of our problems stem from is if something's wrong with the rumen, then the whole cow um, is kind of sick and there's something wrong with it. Um, so making sure we keep that rumen healthy and keeping all of those microbiota that are in that rumen healthy um, is very important to us. Um, so we'll give them like probiotics or prebiotics, like what we get from the store sometimes. Um, some of us who like to be super healthy um, <laughs> sometimes take those as like supplements. So we also give the cows that to kind of keep everything healthy in their gut as well. But each of the four compartments does have a different function to making sure they can fully digest all the stuff that we give them. And that helps cows to be like really good recyclers too, right? Because they eat things that we can't eat. So like we can eat the ears of the corn off of the corn stalks, but we can't eat the stalks. So then we chop it up and give it to the cows. And then they can use that to make milk for us. We even get a little creative with their diets too. Like depending on what's available in your area, some people will feed cows um, food waste from local grocery stores, like the fruit and vegetables. Um, some people like in Florida, they'll feed them you know, citrus pulp left over mm -hmm. from, you know, the local orange juice, you know, bottlers. Um, we feed our cows um, sometimes what's called whole fuzzy cotton seed, which is what's left after they gin the cotton that they can use to, um, to make our clothing. Um, there's still a seed portion left that can't really be used for anything else, but it's a good source of fiber and it's a good source of fat for a cow and it makes a, a good component to a cow's diet. Um, and we work, so we work really closely with a veterinarian on our cow health. We actually work really closely with a nutritionist on our cow's diet. So um, they kind of help us formulate the cow's diet to make sure that it's a, a complete diet that supports a healthy cow. Mm -hmm. And they'll help us determine what some of those ingredients are. Really Treating the, cathlete, the cows like the athletes that they are. We have a doctor that's working closely with them. We also have their nutritionist helping them. We don't necessarily have any like PT or anything, but that's kind of us on a daily basis is making sure that everything's still going well with them. Well, I think that about wraps it up. Um, so thank you for joining us today. Um, I hope you had fun um, and I look forward to seeing you around.